What's up? How are you guys today? The idea that calcium builds strong bones might be the biggest piece of nonsense ever. Arguably as horrible as the idea that red meat causes heart attacks, saturated fat is bad for you. Not only is it wrong, the ingestion of excessive calcium is actually very detrimental to our bodies. You can find studies not only showing that calcium is ineffective for strong bones, you'll find the opposite, that it can make bones more brittle. And we know that calcification of the scalp is something that can cause balding. They literally have something called like a coronary calcium scan for your heart. So we know calcium is bad, it's just people aren't opening their eyes to it. And there are a lot of vitamin and mineral components to our health so whenever someone tries to isolate a specific compound or nutrient or some silly stuff like taking herbal or mushroom powders, it's an immediate red flag. It's not encapsulating the entirety of a food's natural nutrient composition, you know, the variety of things we're supposed to eat. Yeah, there might be slight deficiencies in certain things that should absolutely be addressed. So when we supplement something, it's to fix those deficiencies. Taking extra of something doesn't really make sense. You don't put extra oil in your car engine to increase its efficiency, and the engine is set up for a specific amount of oil. Just like our bodies are set up for a specific amount of nutrients naturally occurring in food in very specific ratios. And it's pretty significant to mention that there's no actual natural source of calcium in a human diet that is comparable to the levels that many people are taking with supplements. Cow's milk, various dairy products are high in calcium, actually, you know, 10 times the amount of calcium that we would get from human breast milk. But most cultures don't consume dairy. They never consume dairy. And if you go to those places that don't have dairy present in the diet, those old people you know, are still living very healthy, happy lives. It's also important to consider that modern farming practices destroy the hypothetical nutrition of milk. Modern feedlot dairy, the stuff on most supermarket shelves, is still high in calcium because the farmers are adding mineral supplements to the feed. However, the milk no longer has many of those synergistic nutrients that work with calcium as the farmers can't supplement everything in their cheap for-profit feeding method. That combined with the pasteurization and homogenization of the dairy products sets people up for poor gut health and poor bone health. This combination of nutritional deficiencies in the milk and lack of beneficial gut bacteria in most people means low amounts of much needed minerals such as magnesium as well as vitamins like K2 which work directly with calcium to metabolize it correctly. The same thing happens sometimes with vitamin D. You know, people take a lot of vitamin D supplements but don't have magnesium and protein and other things that your body needs to metabolize the vitamin D, to actually use it. And when you take imbalanced amounts of nutrients, whether it's supplements or taking too much of certain foods, then those compounds in excess can get stored in your body, in your liver, leading to all sorts of problems. And I mean, I don't really think I should have spent so much time debunking calcium because it's much simpler to just say what bone is actually made of. You know, if someone comes up to you and says, hey, Frank, the sky is green, but it's clearly blue, you know, you're not gonna start explaining why this guy can't be green. You're gonna point up and tell the guy to look at the sky. However, the ideas around calcium are so ingrained, it's difficult to get past them. That's why we kind of went over that a little bit. But basically, the majority of bone is protein specifically amino acids in the form of collagen. And here we have a few studies, an overview of bone cells and their regulating factors of differentiation. Bone is composed of various types of cells and collagenous extracellular organic matrix, which is predominantly type one collagen, 85 to 95% called osteoid that becomes mineralized by the deposition of calcium hydroxyapatite. Type one collagen is synthesized in the body from amino acids and requires a small amount of minerals to be formed in the bond. So, you know, why are they telling us 
we need so much calcium when it's only a small component of like the final bone creation. Physiology, bone. Inorganic bone matrix accounts for 99% of the body storage of calcium, 85% of the phosphorus, and 40 to 60% of the magnesium and sodium. So it's not just calcium binding up that collagen, which is dangerous because supplementing calcium can be antagonistic to phosphorus, magnesium, those other minerals that are actually required for bone health. You can easily cause bone mineral deficiencies by supplementing too much calcium, which seems very ironic. Type 1 collagen. Type 1 collagen is the main component of the organic matrix of bone, dentine, and cementum, the thin layer of calcified tissues that cover the roots of teeth and anchors them to the jaw. Biomarkers of both type 1 collagen synthesis and degradation have proven of great utility, particularly in the osteoporosis field. So medical scientists have been using the body's collagen synthesis capabilities as a marker measure of bone health. So they know how important collagen is. And this makes a lot more sense considering the access of protein in most foods compared to calcium. Now we've done many, many videos on collagen, how to optimize synthesis, also debunking modern collagen supplements in favor of natural foods like bone broth and steak. High quality animal protein, especially grass fed beef, is the best thing for your bones. No other food is better. As we said earlier, the deficiencies are what need to be addressed. You know, you're not optimizing by adding supplements, you're fixing deficiencies. That should be the goal of adding supplements. It could be taking more vitamin C, which is the most important vitamin for collagen synthesis. It could be vitamin K2, magnesium, and various other minerals. You know, if you just substituted vitamin C for calcium in a lot of those studies, people would actually have better bone health. Now, if you are one of those people who took calcium for a long period of time, or took vitamin D even for a long period of time, you really want to avoid it and even things back out. You know, get plenty of natural sun, eat plenty of quality animal protein, while rebalancing your nutrient ratios with specific supplements. Uh, definitely check out my video on hair analysis. Uh, I've done videos on nutrient synergy. You know, you should definitely be taking a lot of magnesium and eating high quality organic foods. But if you guys want to learn more about all that stuff, I have so many videos on that. And you can also go to frank stefanocom where we have all sorts of interesting and unique products ranging from the high quality animal foods on Frankie's free range meat to some of these supplements that you might want to take on organsupplements.com. As always, thank you guys for joining me. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Uh, also, some videos you guys might want to check out that are a bit older if you're interested in this calcium stuff. Uh, one was a video on heart disease, and then another was a video on, I believe, osteoporosis. But either way, we've covered a lot of these calcium, bone, related things and, and have gone a little bit more into the science in the past. So just search my YouTube channel guys and you'll have a lot more to learn.